Hey friends, it's Carol, Saltbox Stitcher. I'm back on Saturday, March 26th. We're almost to the end of March, and this is video number... Sorry, I was scrubbing the kitchen floor. It's number 66. Yeah, he's scrubbing the kitchen floor. Okay. <laughs> oh God, it needs to be done. <laughs> I'm here with my cup of coffee. And I'm back. So, um, hope y'all are doing well. Um, it's beautiful here in sunny Florida. We had a lot of rain this week with the um, storms that came through. Tornadoes, I think, hit Louisiana. But we just got a lot, a lot of rain and wind. But um, it's nice to see the sunshine out again. And it's just beautiful. I think it's like in the low 70s. So, this is the kind of weather that I moved to Florida for. <laughs> Not the August 102 super humid. This is the weather I moved to Florida for. Anyway, but um, I did have a finish this last two weeks. And a lot of things I worked on, I was kind of all over. But that's okay. As long as I was stitching, I guess it's all working toward finishes. So um, the first thing I thought I'd show you. Oh, also, I'm starting to get out some of my rabbits and spring stuff. I don't necessarily correlate rabbits and Easter because to me Easter is about the lamb. But um, I do like to decorate for spring with some bunnies. Um, that one right there is Tis Spring by Plum Street. This is the wordplay, March, and I have April done too, I can put up. Um, the Rabbit is by um, Under the Woolen Willow. Got that last year. The Stand Up is uh, Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. I'm not sure the name of it. This one here is Spring Tulips or something like that by Blackbird. And then the top one is a Scarlet House. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it has a basket on the front. So anyway, let's talk about my finish. So I finished Charlotte Frost. And I've been told I need to hold things up longer. Because I give people migraines. Make them dizzy. So here's Charlotte Frost. I'll show you the pattern in just a second. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let me show you the pattern really quick. The pattern picture does not do it justice. Charlotte Frost by the Scarlet House. Charlotte Frost by the Scarlet House. Charlotte Frost, 1846. I finished this this week. I actually started this one in February. It was a new start in February. And um, I was real industrious and finished the over one verse. Be sort of in the middle of it rather than waiting till the end. But I did wait to the end for these over one swans. This, whoops, let me fold it a little different. Hold on. As my mom used to say, keep your britches on. <laughs> that meant be patient, I guess. The over one swan. Now, don't look too close. There's one on each side. The worst thing is when you finish one, you have to do the other. This is 37 count corn tassel by Legacy Linens. I can do, well, I, obviously I can do over one. Um, to me, it's easier to do letters than it is to do solid stitching over one. I ended up having to use a magnifier, like look through a magnifier, plus have my magnifying glasses on. And there were times I had to look through the little diopter or whatever, the little tiny part of the magnifier. <laughs> Whew, it was... It was tedious, it was painful, but I got it done. 
and I'm really happy with this. I have so many things that need to be framed, but somehow I keep spending my money on more charts, especially my market haul. So anyway, someday it'll either get done and be framed or not. I kind of, um, after I pressed it and I was doing something else in my sewing room and I set it on the um, seat part of my <laughs> recliner and I thought, you know, if nothing else, this could someday just recover a recliner. <laughs> People could sit on it. <laughs> uh, my daughter could do that. One of our neighbors, um, this isn't funny, but he passed away. And his wife, I don't know if she had passed away before him. They're way around the corner, so I don't know that much around about them. But they had one of those big dumpster trash things in front of their house. And... Obviously their children were, or somebody was cleaning out their house and throwing a lot of stuff away. And I told my husband, I said, I need to get rid of some stuff because <laughs> my daughter is gonna take fabric and throw it in the, one of those dumpster things. He's like, no, she wouldn't. I'm like, oh yes, she, would. she most certainly would. I'm getting rid of all of this fabric, moms. <laughs> anyway, it made me chuckle. So this is Charlotte Frost. I'm very proud of her. I love the color of the house. Again, I used 37 count corn tassel by Legacy Linens, and I used the called for NPI. Where are they? Right here. I didn't take them off of the ring yet. Um, I love finishing something, but when you take the things off the ring and then you <laughs> have to go back and put them in numerical or alphabetical, however you sort your, your threads. It's kind of a pain. I had somebody ask if I would kind of give a, I don't know, tell about the different kinds of threads and flosses and all that. I don't know that I'm qualified to do that. Um, I've been stitching a long time. But that doesn't mean I'm necessarily an expert in anything. Um, when I say NPI, these are silks, needlepoint silks. They come on a skein. Um, I believe they're eight ply. Okay, let's talk about ply. When you get a, okay, I'll just get one out, okay? Okay. Let me see one here. Did you, well, why not just use the red, Carol? That's the beautiful one. They do have dye lots, just like anything else. I usually do from my extended arm to my, a little past my elbow. I have short arms, so I can go a little past my elbow. So this is a strand. I mean, this is a length that I've cut off. This really wasn't going to be part of what I was going to talk about, but I kind of got myself down this rabbit hole, so I guess I better get myself out. Rabbit hole? Rabbits? You got it. I know. So, um, the floss that most people are familiar with would be DMC. DMC is cotton. I'm not sure what the D stands for. It's a, I think it's more of a chemical term. The M stands for mercerized and the C stands for cotton. Denatured, denatured, mercer, mer, easy for me to say. Anyway, DMC, if you pull off a length, has six ply. When we stitch, depending on what count of linen, you might use three strands, you know, if you're maybe working on, well, first of all, you might use all six. DMC has six strands. Um, you know, if you're doing a piece, like a seven count something, and you know, maybe you need to use all six. The meat, so use the whole strand. If you're doing 28, 30, even 32, you might use two strands. If you're doing 36, now my good friend Susan Aki, Yard Girl, she uses always two strands on 36. 
um, 40 and up, you're going to use one strand. I also use one strand on 36. So here is a, the needle point silk and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So needle point silk has eight strands or ply to a length, okay? DMC has six. So you're paying more money. Needle point silk, 450 uh, skein. Now as far as the length of it, I think some of them are in meters. This is five meters. So a meter is about 40 inches, I think. You know, we, we have standard here in America. But for those of you who have meters, this is five meters for a skein. Needlepoint silk. It's very smooth. It's not variegated. It's probably my favorite silk to use. So it's five meters, eight ply. So you're paying more, but you're getting a little bit more by getting those eight ply. Okay, so that's needlepoint silk. Then you have, um, let's see if I can show this one. Oops. This is Gloriana, also silk. This one comes a couple of different ways. Um, Gloriana does make some that are um, variegated and some that are just straight color. Um, this you get six yards. So six yards, the other was five meters, but since you get four or five inches more in a meter than in a yard, times five would be about 20. So you're getting almost the same amount of length. Does that make sense? I don't want to get too much in the weeds. But Gloriana is 12 strand. So you may pay a lot more. I don't know the going price, but, but you're getting 12 strand. So in essence, you're getting twice as many ply as you would get with DMC. Let me see, I have DMC here, let me see what it, this is DMC. DMC is readily available at, you know, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michael's. I was surprised, I thought Walmart used to carry DMC, but they don't anymore, at least my Walmart doesn't. Um, DMC is eight meters, which is 8.7 yards. It's cotton, 100% cotton. And it is color fast. And that's how you buy it. I bought some DMC yesterday at Joann's. It was on sale for... I think it's on sale through today, so if you need DMC from your local Joann's. Um, I don't really have a local needle workshop, otherwise I would go there. But it's on sale, I think it was 48, 45 cents a skein. So that's, so in the cotton realm, you have, um, now I gotta put these back where they were, I forget what they are. I can feel the difference between silk and DMC. DMC is just slicker. Um, I mean, silk is much slicker than a cotton. Um, when I said DMC and silk, I meant, anyway, you know what I mean. The other types of cotton are, um, these are what I pulled for some of the new uh, market things. Some I bought. Okay, so then, you have various brands of cotton. Oh, the other, okay, I need to organize my thoughts here. The other type of um, silk, so we're talking silk first. So I first talked about NPIs, then I said Gloriana. There's also Belsois. Belsois is made by the same company 
that makes classic color works. So it's called Classic Color Works Belsois and Classic Color Works Cotton. The Belsois is the silk. S-O-I-E, Swa is silk. It is five yards, 12 strands. I mean, tw yeah, 12 stranded spun silk, five yards. These are both hand dyed. So here's a hand dyed cotton, here's a hand dyed silk. So you're gonna get variegation in both of these. The NPI, it's straight. You don't get variegation. Gloriana has both. So when you're talking silks, there's over dyed, which means they take the plain white, they over dye it, and they come out with a color. And it can be, usually it's kind of variegated. DMC also has some variegated. I have not used that. Um, I know some people have, but I have not used. I like, a, I like a variegated that's a subtle, you know, if it's a green and it goes to a bluish, you know, a yellow green to a bluish green, I want that to be a subtle. I don't want it. Oh my gosh, I'm at 16 minutes and I'm just babbling. <sighs> Anyway, I want it to be more subtle. In my estimation, when I've seen DMC, it's more like a block of blue-green, a block of yellow-green, and it's not a subtle variegation. But it still can be pretty. I mean, it just depends on what look you want. The other silk, and I didn't bring any out, I don't think. So those, NPI is one silk company gloriana is another silk company classic color works bell is another silk the other one that i use frequently is hold please this is a vera soi now this is soi d'alger and this comes in a skein um I don't know what the, I know the swa part means silk. I don't know what the dage means. It's spelled. Oh, let me see. Put my hand up. Maybe it'll focus better. I'm sorry if you can't see that. It's five meters. And it is... I'm not sure how many strands it has. Let's just see. It has a knot at the beginning, so it's kind of hard to count it. It's either seven or eight strands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight strands. So there again, you're getting different amounts. And so sometimes if you're doing a project and you can't decide whether you want to do silk or you want to do DMC. And maybe it calls for um, one silk, but you, you know, one skein of silk, but you want to do DMC. You may need two. It just depends. It also depends on you know, how you stitch. When I stitch in hand, I use a little bit more floss because of the way I do it. Um, maybe someday I'll show you. Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch did a demo on how she stitches in hand with the sewing method it's exactly how i do it so go look for that video on her um, site so that you've got uh, the other type of swa um silk <laughs> not trying to be fancy um this is distributed by access commodities swa d'alger it also comes in the spool You've seen those little spools. I don't have any out here. I should have brought one. It's a lot finer. So each strand finer, um, skinnier, thinner. Each strand will have less coverage. So it's great for using for 40, 46, 56 count, 45 count, whatever. Um, but it's also by Access Commodities. Access Commodities also is the parent company that makes legacy linen like this corn tassel that I just used for that. Um, let's see, what else? So that's the kind of silks that I use. 
I think that's I think that's all the silks. As far as cottons, get my table here organized. We talked about DMC. There's classic color works. A second. Hold please. Which by the way, I did not come up with that. I think Pam of Pam and Steph came up with that. Now everybody says it. You know, like if you're on a phone call and with a company and they put you on hold. Hold please. Anyway, next kind of cotton is Weeks Dye Works. Comes with a little tag. This is also variegated. This also, because it's originally DMC, so they take white DMC, they over dye it. You're going to pay more. It is color fast, supposedly. Um, it's five yards. So again, it's like DMC. And it is six stranded. So it has the same lengths and all that as DMC but it's over dyed. So this is a company weeks. And then you have classic color works that I just showed you. Do I not have any? Uh, there's also gentle art. I don't know why I don't have any gentle art out here. Anyway, there's also gentle art and gentle art makes sampler threads and it make, what's the other one called? But they're both by general art. I file them together. Um, uh, I'm not sure why I don't have any gel art in this bag. But anyway, so you've got three types of over dyed cottons general art, classic color works, and weeks. They're basically DMC that's been over dyed. They for the most part have variegation now some colors may be more subtle others may be have a lot more variegation so anyway that's what i know about floss there's you know there's cosmo there's sulky there's um anchor there's a lot of other floss out there these are the ones that i know a little bit about so any other research you'll have to do kind of on your own because i don't know I, I have used a little bit of Anchor, which is very similar to DMC, but a different company. Um, it's a cotton. Cosmo maybe is rayon. Sulky may have some rayon. Your natural fibers are cotton, silk, and wool, period. They come from either plants or animals or worms. Silk comes from worms. <laughs> Think about that next time you're stitching on your sampler. <laughs> Oh, this is a wormy thread. Some things are twisted to get them into the strands of the ply, like cotton and some, you know, wool. That's why they used to have spinning wheels to get that all together. Silk is a continuous whatever <laughs> that comes from a silkworm. Susan Stanley. A Stitch in Time. I love her videos. I've binged her videos lately. And she would be able to tell you lots more about the process of how thread and floss and all of that is made. But I studied it years ago when I was in college. I'm a textiles and clothing major, but I have forgotten more than I ever learned. Okay, what else did I stitch? I mean, this has been a rabbit trail, so hopefully you just fast forwarded through all that. What else did I stitch on? I did not work on Charlotte Frost continuously. I took a little bit of a break after my last video. Sometimes you just kind of get, this is why I have whips. I get to the point where I'm kind of like, oh, I'm kind of bored with this, I want something else. Or maybe I'm, you know, kind of tired or, and I just want comfort stitching, which for me is just fill in. That's why things like that grass, a house anything like that is comfort stitching to me because it's easy if I don't feel good I don't have to count I don't have to go to umpteen different threads I can just sit and stitch so in needing some comfort stitching I went back and worked a little bit on Jane Atkinson I love this this is one I could just like keep going on but I'm kind of feeling like a wimp 
because I only have two finishes this year. They're both samplers. One was Charlotte Frost. The other was um, Snooty Parrots by Barbara Anna that I finished in January. I have stitched on other things, but I'm I want to see I want to see finishes. <sighs> anyway, so I've worked on Jane Atkinson. I don't know four or five days maybe, and I got a little bit done on this one. I need to move my coffee or I'm going to end up with something. Coffee died. <laughs> Which, by the way, is how a lot of people overdye things. Not the companies, but people that just want to try that look. Coffee actually has a lot of acid in it, so that might degrade your linen or your floss. I don't know if tea has a lot of acid or not. Anyway. Okay, so... I finished filling in that middle big flower. Let's see if I hold it up long enough. I had some other random things that I finished filling in. Um, it's hard to hold this up. This bud. I had some other things over here I finished filling in. And then on both sides, I started going down. And I finished... I worked on this one of these flowers I think for three nights that was a lot of stitching first of all your very first outline you know you really have to count and then as you go to the second and third and fourth colors and actually the middle has two different colors it's very hard to see because they were so close this is a 40 count lentil by lakeside it does have a greenish hue if you wanted to do this one, I would recommend, and you can't find lentil, I would recommend Alcott by um, Needle and Flax because it's kind of the same greenish kind of hue. And then I started going down with that border or whatever. This part, the line that goes around. I really want to get down to here in the tree. I love filling in these flowers, but I want to, And I do want to do some of the over one as I go. So I did just a tad bit of a word. It's the end of the word daughter. So I could just get a little bit of a start on the over one. People that stitch, uh, this one I didn't do a border first because, is there a border, an outer border? No, there's not really an outer border. This shows an outer border of stitching. This is not exactly a picture. I don't know if this was the antique or what, but it's it doesn't correspond totally. I mean, it's obviously a representation. Um, it was designed after an English sampler in the collection of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. So it's not really a, a reproduction. But I, you know, what do I care? Anyway, so I did quite a bit on Jane Atkinson. And I'm really loving this piece. 30, or 40 Count Lentil by Lakeside is the floss I'm using. I love the colors in this. And I'm using all of the silk swadage. That's the silk that's on the skeins. A friend gave me this little scissor thing. Isn't that cute? Four leaf clover. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I also love these. Um, some project bags come with this. This is by Stitch Folk. Um, it's like flannel or um, iron-on batting and I like it doesn't necessarily have to have a needle minder with it but I like to when I'm working on something like this if I don't use a full strand then I lay it on here I actually wish there was a way to devise it so you could actually put the either the symbol or the number of the floss 
like with stickers or something. So if you have a length of floss and you have a red and a pink and a green and a blue all sitting on here, that you could have something like, a, I guess I could print some stickers or write on some stickers, but something that would adhere to the inside of this. So, okay, I need that red again. Was it this red? Oh, yeah, it's this red, because here's the number. That would be convenient. Oh, my. I'm going way too long here. Did I say this was going to be a short video? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So I worked a little bit on that. Um, I picked up this one day when I went to my sewing group. This is with a needle and thread. It's called needle and thread. It says a needle pulling thread. Love that girl. I started this quite a, quite a while ago. It's done on Mellow, 36 count Mellow by Picture This Plus. That's where I am. And interestingly, you can see on the pattern, the grass is stitched going up and down rather than across. It kind of makes an interesting effect of like grass growing. Needle and thread by With Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. This is an older pattern. Um, I'm not sure when it came out. Okay, I need to move right along, Carol. So I worked a little bit on that. Um, that again is a little bit of kind of comfort stitching because I can fill in that grass. And these are the flosses for that. Okay, here's the gentle art. Remember I was talking about the two different gentle art. One is called Simply Shaker. And the other one is just called sampler threads but they're both by gentle art i file them together so this one is called sampler threads and this is called simply simply shaker some designers will put st for sampler threads or um let's see what what do they call the other one um, I think they call it GA. Some, anyway, some designers will specify, and they're really both the same company. So I worked a little bit on that. And, I, and then I worked one evening. I got out my Hawk Run Hollow. I haven't had this out for a long time. This is 36 count sand dune. I'm only on the second block. It's pretty pitiful. I do have all the blocks outlined. This is the village of Hawk Run, Ho Hawk Run Hollow. And this again can be comfort stitching because there's a lot of fill in. I really am anxious to get to that third block. I'm not looking forward to all these back stitches on the willow trees, but I will do them. I'll probably also correct the spelling of Isaiah. She does make a note on here. I learned after the village was stitched that Isaiah is actually spelled different, obviously. I apologize for this error. Unfortunately, I can't change it at this point. But there's room that you could move the letters over. So I, I believe I will do that. So that's Hawk Run Hollow, village of Hawk Run Hollow. I worked a little bit on that grass. Can you see what I'm showing? I worked a little on the grass on the second block. Just filling in. I already had the fence. I already had the fence done. So I worked one night on filling in that grass. It says St. Peter's Church. So I'm going to start picking this up more often because I really want it. I love all the Hawk Run Hollows, and I'll never do all of them if I can't even get one done in a few years. <laughs> I'm 70, you know. I'm using the NPI silks for that. Nope, that's not this. This is the silks for Hawker and Hollow. And yes, I collected them over years. They're not cheap. Kathy Barrick, 
did the, well, they're under Carriage House now, but Kathy Barrick, I think, originally designed all the Hawkrun Hollow. And they're all, the called for is um, NPI silks. If I can do it, I do it. The last one I worked on is, this is a problem child. You know, everybody has at least one. <laughs> oh, I have two kids. My son recently said, I know I'm your favorite mom. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you that and I'll tell your sister that. Anyway, this is Ann Rayner. I keep getting it out, putting it away. Getting it out, putting it away. There's a little tiny picture. A lot of people have done it. It calls for DMC. It's by Threads Through Time. It's no longer available. I have promised it to someone after I finish. Thankfully, they're willing to wait. Um, my problem is the threads. So Nicole of Nicole's Needlework, she followed the conversion that Paulette of Plum Street did. It's available on her blog. I printed that out. But some of the colors over time, they've changed. The silks, you know, some of them. So some of them I got out and I thought, well, this is not yellow. This is off-white, you know. So over time, sometimes dye lots, whatever reason, you know, maybe it's the original, what they used to dye it, like DMC or whatever. Maybe that changes. I don't know but I was not happy with the color conversion. So I started playing with it and switching things around a little bit. That's dangerous for me. Cause then I get all confused. I'm like, well, there's two oranges and this one is supposed to be brighter than this one. And there's two this and there's two reds or there's greens. And this green is starts to be more yellow. And this one, I get more like crazy. So I decided a little while back to pull all of the DMC. Now, a couple of them I didn't have, which was weird, but anyway, they're probably in a project somewhere. I don't claim to have every DMC color. I might. <laughs> I took everything out of kitted projects. But anyway, man, I'm just babbling on today. <laughs> You'd think I had nothing else to do. My grandson has a baseball game today. I gotta hurry. Anyway, I pulled all the DMC and I started to try to do my own conversion, which can be dangerous. So here's an example. Paulette's conversion is darker, richer colors. The DMCs are brighter. I'm not opposed to either one, but I don't want part of it to be bright and part of it to be darker. So here's an example, 335 is the DMC color. I ended up pulling a Soie d'Alger that's a little more pinky red. So I've gone through each one of the colors and tried to come up with a decent substitute. Here's the DMC 347 and then I pulled a um, Belle Soie Sister Scarlet. So as I'm going through this, now keep in mind, I had already started this. So then I'm like, okay, I have to be consistent with whatever I started with. So like the green and the border, I if that green appears somewhere else, I have to be somewhat consistent. I think, maybe I don't, I don't know. So last night I'm stitching some alphabets. First of all, I should have just put it away. I stitched the entire alphabet here just to look at the picture and thought, I think that's a different stitch. I don't think that's just X's. So sure enough, I go to the instructions. <laughs> Novel idea. <laughs> Read the instructions. Do you ever have that test played on you as a kid? And it's a list of things, you know. The first number one thing it says, number one, is to read everything before you do anything. Number two, put a circle around your name. Number three, you know, whatever. You know, draw a star at the top of the page. And it goes through this list of like 20 different things to do on the page. 
you get to the bottom and it says, now that you have uh, read it all the way through, just go back and do number one and two. You're like, uh, I didn't do that. It's a little deceiving because obviously you're reading each one, but whatever. Reading the instructions is important. So I w realized it said, oh, that al small alphabet underneath that Greek key. This is the Greek key. One of the Susan Stanley Stitch in Time videos that I watched in the last couple of days. I binged you, Susan. <laughs> it's very delightful. Anyway, she talked about Greek keys. But the alphabet right above it is supposed to be a four-sided stitch. Now let me hold it up here long enough that you see. So I went back. I took all that alphabet out. And I restitched the W with the four-sided stitch. Just to remind myself, if I get carried away, this whole alphabet is supposed to be the four. I like to do the four-sided, so it's not a problem. Could I have left it? Sure. Did I decide I'd rather take it out? Yes. That's just me. So then I'm scooting along on this alphabet here, which is a little bit more script. Okay, I'm going to get complaints about my wiggling and my not holding it correctly. Okay, so here we go. It's just hard to hold. This alphabet right here is what I'm calling script. And yes, that blue for the M and N is supposed to be kind of ghosty. So I get to the next color for the next two letters. It's an orange. Oh, I was also simultaneous doing this smaller alphabet along here. And I get to the U and the V here. And I think it's supposed to be the same color here. And I come to this orange and I'm like, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. It's the same orange. It kind of looks yellow, but it's the same orange that's used here. I don't like that. So that was one of the colors of DMC that I didn't have. So I have the big fold out chart of DMC and I start looking through that and I thought, well, this color is not even close to what the DMC, the DMC is more of a rusty color. And here I am with this yellow what, or yellowy orange. I'm like, what is my deal? So based on the fold out chart of DMC, I came to this color. This is an Averisois, I had it in my stash, 3825. This, and I'm gonna hold this up, but it's hard to see. This band right there is the color. It's right here. It's not that light yellowy orange. It's more like this. So this is what I'm going with. So I'm taking out that whole, this whole band. Now, the way I stitch, I cross each X, it's very, it's just pretty easy for me to take out. It'll take me some time, but I'll be happy when it's done. So I'm basically going thread by thread and trying to figure out my colors and it's kind of driving me crazy because I love this piece I really want to stitch it I've so anybody that's stitched it recently with a conversion private message me on Instagram saltbox stitcher and let me know what you used if you don't mind just the colors I'm not asking for any kind of proprietary information, okay? <laughs> I don't do that. I don't copy charts. If it's a color conversion by somebody like Country Sampler or The Attic, I don't give it out. Enough said. <laughs> so that's what I've been stitching on. That's my two weeks of stitching. Started out great. <laughs> the finish, all of that. And now I'm 44 minutes in and I haven't shown you any of my haul.
So I'm going to briefly show you some of the things that I got from Market. This is going to be a really fast whip through because I want to keep it under an hour. I got this one from Stacy Nash. Strawberry basket pin keep. I'm going to stitch it on Havana. No, I haven't kitted it. I got this one by Scarlet House. Love those little... I have some red linen. I think that's going to be fun. I got this one, Barb's Birds from Needle Made Designs. Some of these just came this morning. I love that. It was um, Linda Vinson's uh, tribute to Barb of Blackbird. Barb's Birds. I love this. Love it. I got this, Brenda Gervais, Rejoice Evermore. It calls for um, Antique Lace by Seraphim, which I happen to have some in my stash. This is why I get stash. And I have pulled the colors. <laughs> oh, that's attractive, Carol. It has some DMC, it has some Weeks, it has some... A little bit of everything. Okay, now I'm trying to hurry, and I'm getting, as Laura would say, heart heart palpitations. If I get heart palpitations, palpitations you need to call 911 because I have stents in my heart, so I don't need to get heart palpitations. So here's the colors. And that is for Rejoice Evermore. There might have been a few DMC that I ended up um, in that bag of stuff. I got this one, Elizabeth Hunt, also by Brenda Gervais, 1845. This one calls for... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Sheep Straw, which is by R and R. You can get it at Dying to Stitch. So I had a piece of that, and the colors for this are in that bag. I really think this is one of the first I'm gonna start when I allow myself a new start. I love this. This is probably other I always have to say other than Blackbird, this is probably my number one favorite from market. Hold on, I gotta put these back. If I don't put them back, I'm gonna end up with a big mess, which I may end up with anyway, so. Um, more Brenda Gervais that I got, I love this. And in my anxiety to get more finishes done, this would be a great way to get some finishes. So, I'll talk about that a little bit. I got this one, Seasons of the Heart. I want to look and see if there's any like um, metal tags. Sometimes like Hobby Lobby, and I don't, I've never seen them this year, so don't go looking for it. But sometimes you can find like little tags that'll say spring, fall, whatever. So I got that. This was a Plum Street release. Thistle, Thistle Pocket. I already had this. This was a kit from a while ago. Plum Street. I got The Humming of the Bees by Blackbird. Love this one. This one calls for Velt by Picture This Plus. Velt is very green. And some of my Legacy, which is also a color by Picture This Plus. Not the Legacy that makes linens. This is Legacy the Color by Pictures Plus. Some of mine is very green, so I'll probably use a piece of Legacy. And again, these threads are in that bag. I just haven't sorted them all out yet. Got this one, Scarlet House, Janet Barr Slater, 1853. 
another Scarlet House. This is the Pennsylvania Vine, 1755. I think this is gorgeous. Well, I think they're all pretty. Wouldn't have bought them if I didn't like them. Got this one from Scarlet House Needfuls. This is another of some quick finishes. Maybe. Some of them have a lot of stitching, a lot more stitching than you'd think. Heart Remembers. I was going to get this out. I've shown it before. I started it years ago. I had some whatever spill on it. It bled. I might just take the middle one that I have finished and, and do it separate and then just redo this. I love that. They were from the original Loose Feathers. I also have this, the Market Exclusive. Have I stitched them? No. This is that piece of legacy that's kind of green that I'm used for humming of the bees. Some of these I have finished. I finished this one. I should have gotten it out. I didn't. This is this book is called A Heart Remembers by Blackbird. Alma, I'm sure in her really broken heart that she has from losing Barb. But this one really caught my eye. I just love that. A heart remembers, my dear friend. I had a very trying time between 1982 and 1992. During that time, my mom died, my dad died, my brother died, I got married, I had two kids, and I moved to Florida. I think every stress factor you can have was in that 10 year period. So I want to do this for a family member, whether I do it for my mom, my brother, my dad, but it calls for the linen parchment by fiber on a win. So I ordered, this is actually the color. Now to me, it's a, the picture looks a little bit more tan and less green, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it, unless I find something else that I like better. I might use an R&R, because there's some R&Rs that I think would be really close to the color of that. But that one just, I love that. I love all of these, but I really, that one's calling my name. I got the new Shakespeare's Peddler. This is Jane's Summer Work, 1831. Beautiful. Teresa did an outstanding job on her new releases. I got the two. Um, no, this is two by Julia. Got that booklet. And this is uh, Cathcart Calhoun, 1785. I love that one too. Love the colors. Let's see what else is in my... I have this wonderful bag. It's canvas. It's really heavy. It's great for traveling. I don't know. I think I got it at Dillard's or something. It's by Danica Studios. But I do use it when I travel. It's a little... The zipper's a little harsh on it. So I don't usually put stitching in here. But it worked great for this. I also got the With Thy Needle and Thread, the rabbit. What's it called? The rabbit and the rose. That might be my first start. I don't know. I got a couple of the Plum Street. This is the day the Lord has made. And God bless America. Love that. And this one by Erica Michaels. That is gorgeous. I don't, this is also stitched on corn tassel, which I have another piece of that. I don't think this has over one. I think all those words, now there may be some over one. Yeah, there may be some over one in some of these little tiny motifs here, like the dog and the birds, but I don't think the verse is over one. I don't know. So that's my market haul. And then I got to thinking 
about wanting some quick finishes. So I got out some things that are what I would call mediums to sm smalls to mediums. This is one I have kitted. This is a Brenda Gervais. I have that box even. So come on, Carol. I think when I finish that needle pulling thread, I'm going to start this one. Again, this is another one with the grass going stitched up and down. Needle and flax by with thy needle and thread. So that's that's an I want to do. You know, a lot of people have talked about the collecting is, you know, part of the fun of all this. And that is true. But trust me, I want to do all these too. I don't just want to collect them. I want to do them. Um, this one is a whip. Brick house sampler. I have that started, barely. Actually, it goes this way. Hold it up longer, Carol. You're going to get in trouble. You know, there are cross-stitch please. People think there aren't, but there are. My mission in life is to love God and love my neighbor as myself, but I don't think everybody feels that way. I think some of them have a mission in life to tell us all the things we do wrong or supposed to. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> wink, wink, Ra Rachel. <laughs> you gotta laugh, you know. I've been told I was drunk when I do these. <laughs> that I'm too religious, you know. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Anyway, I, this is a whip. I've changed the colors on this so much I don't know what to do, but this one I need to start over, redo, whatever. Um, so that's, these are what I call mediums. Um, I don't know, some people might call them bigger than that. What else is in this bag of tricks? Oh, here's some Plum Street ones that I really wanna do. Here's, an, here's one, I think Brenda finished this one. Scarlet House, we are the sampler makers. That was part of a class. I have the board, the horn book board that it gets mounted on. Um, I also bought that book. Oh, I, I showed you. The spring, summer, fall, and winter that were um, from Brenda Gervais. Well, I also have these from Plum Street. How fun would it be to put all of those in a dough bowl together? This is spring. Salt boxes. I mean, really, Carol. Salt box stitcher, salt boxes. Get it done. Um, <clears throat> I also have the summer ones in here somewhere. I know, crinkling, crinkling. Oh, where is it? Anyway. Judge not, lest you be judged. That's another wink, wink, Rachel. <laughs> I can be a little sassy. <laughs> Can't we all? I have two Plum Street here that are older that I just love. And it's like, why haven't I not done these? Milk and cream and wool and flax. Hold it up longer, Carol. The Wool and Flax Company. The Milk and Cream Company. Those are adorable. I got this one out. Blue Skin. Um, and I ordered a piece of Rachel's, is it Delaware Crossing? I think that she said somebody's done. It's more blue. I do have it kitted, but I think I'm going to use that blue Delaware Crossing, which is a linen by Needle and Flax. So, whenever that comes. Here's another Plum Street, Bless Our Land. You know, some of these just wouldn't take that long. You know, four or five nights maybe. Maybe less. I've done some of the um, cereal bowl uh, collection. 
think I've done two of them. Here's three that I need to do. This is about the bees. It's called, this is Sampler Lessons 3 Cereal Bowl. It doesn't have a specific name of the chart other than Lesson 3. This is Lesson 5. I also have Lesson 4 in here somewhere. Love is but a moving shade. Valued friendship never will fade. I thought about doing this one for my sister, so sisters. Anyway, I have a lot of these and when you when you get things from market, maybe you're not this way, but I'm I I start thinking, wow, you have a lot already that you haven't stitched. Let's get those out and take a look at them. So I did. Oh, here's the summer salt boxes. I showed you the spring. These are the summer ones. Because I'm starting to think about patriotic, believe it or not. I could sit here and show you charts all day, but you'd be so bored you'd want to leave home. Um, I was going to show you. I also have, see that little bunny right Let's see, where is he? He's right here. I made these years ago for a spring craft show. He's kind of cute. He's got little whiskers that have, let's see, what was this stuff called? It's not, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty strong. What is the name of that? I can't remember, but anyway, he's got a little, bow. The body is ticking. It has walnut crystals in the bottom so it stands up. I have about a dozen of these guys. I'd like to get rid of them but I want to sell them. I don't know what price I'll go with yet. I made them probably 10 years ago so you know they're not new but I think they're still they're made with um, his, this is wool felt. He's really cute. So I think I may go on Instagram. I don't have an Etsy shop. I might need to to um, freshen up his yarrow that's in his little bucket. He's he's pretty dapper. Anyway, I want to get rid of them. They're in a box and I like I need to get rid of these so I have a t 10 or so that I want to sell so if you're, if you're interested maybe in the next I don't know I always promise things and then I don't do them so but I am definitely going to sell those because I need to get rid of them and that is all I have to say um, we have a ball game today and oh my gosh this is again over an hour how does it how does that happen? I'm just sitting here talking to myself for an hour. That's almost criminal, I think. <laughs> or sinful, one or the other. Anyway, I hope you all have a good week and I hope you get lots of stitching done. Love you. Bye.